Move to the open debate. I call for Stuart McMillan to be followed by Craig Hoy around four minutes. Mr McMillan. Thank you very much, Mr President. Also, first I want to thank Daniel Johnson for securing this debate. And his motion refers to the impact of antisocial behaviour and youth disorder and businesses in his Edinburgh Southern constituency. Now, I sympathise with this. I'm not going to talk about Edinburgh Southern. I'm going to talk about my area and things that have actually happened in my location. Because I know it certainly is uh, it's an issue that every single MSP in the Chamber will have had to attend to and deal with. In Moore constituency, I previously carried out a survey of local businesses around the Greenwich West uh, train station regarding antisocial behaviour following discussions with some of the retailers. And the results indicated that people were just loitering around the shop. It uh, can put people off entering. And I shared the, the information I got back with local stakeholders to help them better understand the concerns of the local shopkeepers and hopefully find ways to address them. There have also been the issues regarding the boy racers in the Tesco's in Greenock uh, car park uh, after the shop closes, uh, with the noise and the headlights flashing into the adjacent homes, disturbing the residents at all hours. But youth disorder and antisocial behaviour can take many, many forms. And for example, Inverclyde is currently served by 13 train stations, so youths tend to congregate at locations they can access via a train, which is different from other parts of the country, whereas it's buses, my area, it's mostly trains. Now, this could be partly near Rootall Station, McDonald's and Port Glasgow, uh, near the Port Glasgow Station and Inverkip Harbourside, which is a short walk from the Inverkip Station. Now, the rail network in Inverclyde plays such a key role in the movement of youths, and most of whom are just wanting to spend some time with their pals, uh, but often that very small cohort are the ones who want to cause trouble. I was keen to speak in today's debate to highlight some of the good partnership working in Inverclyde to actually deal with some of the youth disorder. Uh, because although I do sympathise with Mr Johnson's uh, concerns, this motion doesn't offer up any local solutions to actually try to attend to some of the issues. But we as MSPs also have a role to play to try to help. Now, I'm not saying that we have got a, uh, we've got a magic cure in Inverclyde. I'm certainly not saying that we have eradicated youth disorder. However, we have made some significant strides in dealing with the issues at the Inverkip Harbour side certainly this year, in which I attribute to the, the joint working by local stakeholders. So two actions have actually taken place. First of all, for over five years, I've convened a group consisting of the local community council, ward councillors, Police Scotland, BTP, community wardens, ScotRail, and also some local residents to help to bring a focus to the issue. This has also led to, at various times, targeted work uh, at some of the local uh, train stations to actually prevent people from heading down to the harbourside area. No party politics has been played in this issue because it's been about the safety of the community and also the safety of the younger people themselves. This localised approach certainly has been helpful. The second action has been via the partnership hub headed up by Police Scotland and Inverclyde. This involves partners from the police, Inverclyde Council, local RSLs, the Fire and Rescue and Health and Social Care and others when required, uh, aiming to deal with antisocial behaviour in, in Inverclyde, including youth disorder. Now, the Minister for Community Safety and Victims recently visited the partnership hub at my, uh, after I invited her to come along to it, uh, and I know that she genuinely was impressed by the approach that has been taken within Inverclyde. Now, saying also, youth disorder in Inverkip in my constituency has been, a, it has been a problem for many, many years, often dissipating and then spiking again, and typically coinciding certainly with the, the good weather. But I think it's important to mention that during a debate on this subject, that we actually all were young ones. Uh, no doubt all of us at some point in my past have probably made some mistakes. Uh, we also probably attended gatherings when uh, there was a vast majority of the individuals were well behaved, but that small minority didn't. Now, this can lead to others not looking for trouble, sadly actually being dragged in. And, and in these instances, Inverclyde Council, they send out parent alert letters to try to address this. The parents are told that their child was at a certain location on a certain night when youth disorder took place. The young person might have had nothing at all to do with any of that disorder, but they could have been dragged into it inadvertently. So the letters are to actually make parents aware and encourage them to check up on where their kids actually are. Now, return to the partnership hub, uh, I'm conscious of time, presenting officer, and I'm about to finish. Return to the partnership hub. The focus given to Inverkip before and during the summer led to what I, what I know has actually been a vast reduction in youth disorder. Now, I want to thank everyone involved and pass on the thanks from my constituents uh, who certainly have been in contact with me. And I know this approach will continue and other areas affected by youth disorder can be addressed in a similar successful way. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. McMillan.